A new Vogue magazine story features White House Press Secretary Corinne Jean-Pierre describing her as a bold color wearer and eyeshadow wearer, history maker, who has sharpened the technique of disarming the White House press corps with a smile and then laying out the facts. The article recounts her achievements in the position, including keeping her feelings in check when answering to issues like student debt relief and details how she preps for questions she may face in press briefings. The story also details Jean-Pierre's struggles with mental health when she was younger and how the now press secretary never saw herself working in politics. So I was uh, a little taken aback by how uh, slobbery, I guess you could say, this profile was, though it wouldn't be the first time for the Biden administration, as you know. Miss Jill, or Dr. Jill, I should say, had the Vogue cover um, in the first summer of the administration. We had a profile of uh, former press secretary Jen Psaki. Kamala. We had the cover of Kamala. Mm -hmm. um, that was pretty widely panned, by the way, because they did not uh, do a good job with the lighting and clothing choices on that one, in my opinion. But it's a different, different side of the house. Oh, we were thrilled with ours. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> um, but uh, it's it strikes me as a bit odd that we have these four profiles, two covers in a row, and none under the former administration. What's going on with the fashion magazine industry? I don't know. Maybe it has to do with calling the press the enemy of the people. I'm not sure. <laughs> No, I don't know. I, 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 uh, I'm not sure the, um, are you, I guess what you're saying is there's a double standard in terms Indeed. of Vogue, specifically Vogue coverage. Sure. Or any of the women's magazines. I mean, Melania was one of the most fashionable first ladies in modern history. Um, you had Kaylee McEnany, who dresses very similarly to Corinne Jean-Pierre. They both apparently really like bright colors and bold eyeshadow and she was never mentioned by any of these magazines about her style or fawned over. I, mean, it's I don't. Bizarre. I, I don't know. I can't defend like how they book their guests. I think uh, women in high-profile, high-pressure positions are an obvious choice to profile. It makes sense as to why um, Jen and Kareem and. Uh, Dr. Biden and the vice president were chosen to profile. Um, but, you know, I, I agree with you. I think like I would have liked to have seen a Melania uh, Vogue cover as well, especially because, as I learned, going through the Vogue process that um, actually every first lady has had a Vogue cover since like Lou Hoover or mm -hmm. something like that. Um, and, you know, they reached out to us. Uh, early, er, early in the summer. Of, I'm sorry, in the summer of 2020, is saying, you know, if you win, we want to do this. Blah blah blah. Can we be your first cover? I, it sounded great. I mean, I guess every woman loves to be on be in Vogue, and we were thrilled with the piece that they they did on Dr. B. Um, so I, I don't, I can't, I don't know. I don't have an answer. <laughs> uh, they, you will have to ask uh, one of Melania's um, uh, people. But you know, look. I can only speak for Dr. Biden. Well, I don't even speak for her now. But what I would say, I can speak for my time there, is that like she engaged the press a lot. She she campaigned like an animal for her husband in 2019, in 2020, and she held a full time job. So it she engaged the press and asked for press attention because she was helping. She was very visible presence on the campaign trail. Melania was, took a different approach. I'm not saying that approach is bad or worse. I have no criticism of Melania Trump. I have a lot of respect for her. Um, but that maybe, maybe that played a role, her lack of interest in, in the press or um, defensiveness with the press. She did, she did a couple of interviews. I'm not saying she didn't do interviews. She did a couple. But, um, you know, Dr. B courted the press a lot. We needed it. We needed to have uh, that free media in, in places where it was hard to get in like Iowa, New Hampshire, uh, when, when, you know, your candidate is down. So I think this illuminates a lot how a lot of the mainstream press works. I know that's they, the argument. They, I know. they trade on access, right? I mean, it, that's how it is. They uh, they get to talk to to Dr. Jill, and in return, she gets the Vogue cover. And that's how a lot of the White House press corps works too. They're really terrified of upsetting administrative officials or upsetting the president himself because they're afraid of they of them not getting to go into the background interviews and being pulled from the briefing I, um, for those events. I don't disagree with you, and I I know exactly what you're talking about. I <laughs> I first of all, I want to say as somebody who 
came from the media side and then went over to the other side. Um, that's not that's not how I would ever conduct relationships with with the media. And I think that I found uh, my relationships with the media uh, because they 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 came out of a trust and respect for the jobs that both of us have. Um, were good relationships, and I, I earned that trust and respect because I treated them like they had a job to do, not trying to block the job they had to do or trying to stonewall the job they had to do or trying to uh, punish them punitively for things that I, that I didn't like that they wrote. Um, that's not how to, that's not the best way to uh, engender good press coverage for your boss. Uh, the press shapes uh, public opinion um, and as we just saw in one of our segments, public opinion isn't doing very well in terms of uh, for, for this president. So um, I, I hear you loud and clear. I know I know you're right about that. And um, that's not the way I did business. But um, yeah, I appreciate that you operated with this attitude of mutual respect, because I think, unfortunately, outside of the first lady's office, the 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 presidential side of the uh -huh. admin has been very restrictive to yeah, press and access. Yeah, and I think the difference between um, really good communications people, um, you're not going to be able to stop every bad story, but you are able to contribute in a way that brings your view, brings like your principal's view into the picture mm -hmm. in ways that it might might not get if you don't participate or if you're hostile or if you start from a position of a threat and treat the press as a threat and a hazard instead of an opportunity. And the best the best press people will work with the press to make the story accurate and honest and fair, um, even if it's going to be a bad one. Um, and, you know, I, I think Karina has done a good job of that behind the scenes and and Jen Psaki certainly did. Um, but uh, that's that's just the way I did it. Yeah. And I and I think it's fair to say, at least from my perspective, that there's a little bit of Democrat privilege that's inherent in that because so much of the press is liberal. I mean, something like. 70 to 80 percent of members of the media um, vote Democrat or, or donate to Democratic candidates. So it might be a little bit easier to get your perspective in a story if the person that you're talking to uh, naturally agrees with or at least understands your perspective. Well, and but also I would say the converse of that is if you if you don't engage the press, even if you know if, if I know Fox News is going to do a bad story on on Jill Biden or um, the Daily Caller. I, I still want to contribute. I still want to make sure the piece is as accurate and as fair as possible. I still want to engage the reporter. If you leave a vacuum, the vacuum is just going to be filled yeah. by somebody and, else. And the Trump administration did engage with all of those reporters, it, too much in my opinion. Um, but that's uh, I'm not obviously a campaign strategist or, or a media official, but I wish we had more time to talk about the what the Vogue profile said about I'm Karine Jean-Pierre. But no, it's OK. I mean, this we got off topic. It was an interesting discussion about how the media ecosystem actually operates, which I think maybe people who aren't enmeshed in it mm -hmm. don't fully understand. So I, I, mm -hmm. I hope it was illuminating for everybody. That does it for us this week on Rising, actually. And Michael, thank you so much for being here. It was great sitting at the desk with thank you. Thank you for having me. It was fun. Absolutely. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe so you never miss any content. And for those of you who like to listen while on the go, we are now available anywhere you listen to podcasts. We'll see you next week. Thanks for joining us.